That's your own, although I, I don't know him personally yet, uh, he's a very good person as well. I mean, I, I of course, I know the band. I, I met his dad back in the day and uh, Tangent Dreams so him, but he, he's a very good person, you know, their own. Yeah. So. No, it's like, I was, a, it was like a dream. I mean, you know, a Tangerine Dream is their seminal band forever. Like, what can you say? So it was just, a, I nerded out uh, to, to get to work with him, you know, him and John Ignello. Like, it was just, I, I felt overwhelmed with uh, just gratitude, I guess, that I got to work with these, these people and that they actually, they dug what I was doing. It was like, wow you know really it was very um i guess it's like very validating in, in ways you know to, to feel like two people who were so exceptionally talented could feel like you, you know you're worth investing time in i get you i have um listened to several of the interviews and um, comment about the album and um your voice is so unique uh you know, very distinctive, full of emotion, and uh, it's, it's very unique. It's very, very, you know. Cheers. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I've, uh, I, I guess I've been told I have a, I have a, a, a definitely a, a strange old, unique voice. <laughs> yeah. And that's what make you, you, you know? Yeah. Um, well, I, I think, you know, when I was a kid, I, I think I, I used to sing and choir or whatever and I think I always sounded just like an old warbly lady you know when I was like seven so now I'm just mm, stepping into that play that space uh, as an adult woman yeah yeah I think your voice had been compared to uh, Nate uh, uh, Kate Bush's or Nick Cave or uh, PJ Harvey's and so on so forth so man that's a that's an honor it's a privilege to somebody yeah. Say that to you about this, your, your yeah. style, your voice, and right. I mean, that's that's a lot of mm, um, impressive name checks there. Um, I I love all of those vocalists. Um, so, I mean, I was a huge PJ Harvey fan. I I I'm still am. Uh, growing up, I'm Nick Cave, and I I think I definitely, um, you know, probably was huge, I was hugely influenced by both of them. And Kate Bush as well. Like I love, they're they're all phenomenal artists. Um, and I, I think you know, I think growing up, learning to sing, I probably listened to just like a lot of like Motown. To be honest, yeah. like a lot of Motown and and some soul and jazz and stuff like that. I mean, that was you know, there was a lot of mix of that. You know, growing up, being played in the house and 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 then rock. So I think. Uh, but how I learned to sing, I, I mean, I was obsessed with the commitments as a child and that kind of got me really into Motown and kind of what made me want to sing like that. I just wanted to kind of be in that movie. <laughs> and uh, so I think that's where maybe that started, you know, that, that sound maybe. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you a, a little bit about your, your life and a, a, a little bit of a personal question. I can, you know, I, I read somewhere that, you are outspoken about HDHD and uh, ADHD, yeah, yeah, and uh, I tell you because I it runs in my family. I mean, um, we are I don't know all of us, but the majority are are HDHD, uh, a little bit of autism, a little bit of Asperger, um, in many ways in society you look down as a wild kid as a well, kid who couldn't stand still or this or that, or whatever, uh, and give you they give you a pill every day to concentrate. That's I was born that way, and that's a gift in many ways to me. Mm -hmm. I I never have never taken any medicine, but that's the best thing that ever happened to me. Be born that way. As I'm talking to you, I'm solving problems in my head and and figure things out, and and uh, it's it's it's. Although you're labeled differently and it's hard sometimes for me or you to stay on track and concentrate on the task on hand, whatever you're doing and, uh, and uh, <clears throat> whether you take medicine or not, that's, that is great. That's like a gift if you know how to unravel that and then make it work for you. And I, in my case, I didn't make it work for me. There, there are days that are very difficult 
I need to talk to myself. Okay, I have a test in front of me. I have an interview. Right. But <clears throat> when I'm not that, you know, in the, if, you know, concentrated to do well on whatever I'm doing at the moment, that's uh, my mind goes well. And that's, that's the reason that I put the radio. That's the reason that I'm interviewing with people. I have so many other projects. I am a computer computer scientist, so I, I make a living as an engineer, and uh, that's the that's the best thing that ever happened to me. You know, I, although it was very difficult to accept it and uh, to live with it, uh, you know, because I was labeled you know a wild kid. I couldn't stand still, you know, when I was five year old, right? So and um, it wasn't um, uh, this manual as I call it, the DSM four. That it wasn't it wasn't at the time, they didn't have an entry. They, you were labeled like a wild kid, right? So, and uh, and then DSM four, DSM many psychiatry look into the stuff. Uh, well, you know, there's something called Asperger or HTC or autism, and these kids are labeled differently a little bit, but they they manage well. I end up, you know, though um, my parents saw that. Uh, man, maybe I will never graduate from high school or I wouldn't make any it's in my life, you know, 30 something years later. I have uh, five college degrees. I went to the best school in the country and I have done very well with myself. So I, I, I figured out how to unravel, how to make something and make it possible. So that's my experience. Feel free to what, what it means to you. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, a wonder, that's wonderful. I love that. Um, for me, um, I think that it was a real relief to get the diagnosis because I got my diagnosis late. Yeah. And, um, because of that, I think that I spent a lot of time in my life thinking that I was just failing at being like everyone else rather than realizing that my way of, of being in this world and navigating the world and thinking and whatever working was just different. It was just a different way. And yeah. it, it didn't make it any um, less valid. And, you know, it meant that I was able to do some things, you know, even maybe better than other people. But, um, you know, it was hard, I think, growing up because in Ireland, ADHD it's just not really it's not diagnosed regularly in children when i was growing up anyway um and i don't know how things have changed but i don't think i th i think it's still underdiagnosed in ireland and it's doubly underdiagnosed in women um because um oftentimes because of the way that we're socialized um the symptoms that people instantly associate with adhd um tend to be like what they assume for the ma for the masculine or whatever for for, for yeah um so like a, sometimes a lot of times like you know women can present as a sort of and, and it's the same with actually like Asperger's as well like being on the spectrum but like they present as sort of more daydreamers you know like it's more inattentive ADHD than the hyperactive ADHD um and uh, that's more common a lot of times in in women and so then it's 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 uh, less likely to be diagnosed um i it has been such a wonderful thing to em embrace it and and realize that this is what i've been like and what's been going on this entire time and it has changed my life to to realize that and to to know fully um how my brain is working why it does the things I, that it does and it's not that it's just a fail like when i have those tough days it's not me failing at being just you know a regular person it's you know it's it's dysfunction it's a form of dysfunction and, and that's fine then there's ways to navigate that when you know what that dysfunction is you can work at you find ways to deal with it much easier than if you don't know what's wrong with you uh, or you don't totally, know yeah. what, what the situation is or how you're different or how your brain works. Um, and I find that like a lot of, you know, I have a lot of neurodivergent friends as well. So there's a whole like, I, for a long time when I, <laughs> when I was younger, you know, I would, I feel, you know, they're especially magnetically drawn to certain people. And it was only oh when I was older that I was like realized that it's just like I'm just very magnetically drawn to other neurodivergent people because we 
see the world a lot of the time the same way. We understand how to talk to each other. There's no, I think when you sit down with someone else who's neurodivergent, there's a lot less, um, you're not, you can just kind of go straight to it, you know, because there's less um, worry about like being misconstrued or misunderstood um, because you're able to just kind of lay it out and take things very, you know, well, I found, you know, take things very like literally and, and, and straightforward. You're not worried about uh, the social anxieties and the, you know, having to navigate certain social cues that you might not fully understand or get, I guess. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I feel really comfortable in that diagnosis now. And it wasn't a, a struggle to get, um, to get it like, um, as in I didn't feel sad, like, upset that I was ADHD or that I was neurodivergent. I was very relieved. I But I did feel a great sort of grief, I guess, in a weird way for all the years that I wasn't afforded that ability to embrace that and to understand myself better. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I think, you know, I'm really passionate about being outspoken about it because I think of like myself as a young, as a younger person, and if I had had that diagnosis earlier, like whether you're medicated or not, just to understand yourself better is such a gift. And absolutely, absolutely, man. Yeah. Well, that's make you unique. Your unique voice, and then having the you know being different in the world, and uh, you know being successful, you know, quote unquote, in the the eyes of society, and then do what make you happy, you know. Uh, for me, it was music. I don't, as mentioned before, I don't play any instrument. I don't know how to read music, but I've been listening to music for the last 50 years and has given me a lot of satisfaction. And, uh, and you know, embrace the the spectrum, so to speak, and, um, and, and run with it. You know, some people, believe it or not, some people prefer not to know. You know, I, yeah. uh, uh, I don't know who I am to... Um, make a decision for them but some people prefer if i don't know if they were to have cancer they they prefer not to know that they have cancer and do, so they what they don't want to deal with stuff they will one they will will die one day right but like all of us but um other people prefer to know well i have diabetes i need to you know do this to that do exercise whatever but unfortunately people don't kind of live in denial and prefer not to know that kind of stuff and uh you know, it's, I don't know, I prefer to know, you know. <laughs> yeah. I have a, I have a, I'm an engineer, so I have a, my yeah, mind is... want to know all the things. want to know how the, how the stuff works, right, you know, so... Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I think when it comes specifically to um, anything that relates to your brain working differently, um, you know, and whether that's, you know, in regards to, like, mental health, you know, like anxiety depression you know like um or neurodivergence you know that's all um all, all can affect your you know how you get through day to day um i think that it's it's just it's always helpful i think for me i think it's always helpful to be able to just know and then you can navigate uh it's a you know i have like i i also have like you know um anxiety you know i have a general anxiety disorder and you know that's it's good to know that because it means that when i'm in situations that will trigger that anxiety i know how to to deal with them um yeah, yeah. to best protect myself absolutely in yeah. those yeah. moments but you know like everything you know it's 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 up to anyone what how they want to live their lives and embrace what works for them yeah uh, I just, I hate to think of anyone suffering, you know, I guess needlessly, you know, when they, without kind of like feeling that they have not, that there's something wrong with them when it's just, just brain chemistry. And yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, as you can tell right now, my, my interviews are, are different in the sense that I don't go to all the hits, you know, because that's boring. I, for me, it's important to know the human person behind the instrument, behind the guitar, behind the wood, that's what I ask. I open up myself and I ask kind of, you know, uh, question about themselves because I want to know the musician, the person, you know, uh, behind the instrument, not just, you know, the, the hits, you yeah. know, 
you know, uh, number one, number two, how many records and so on. That, uh, that is out there. Everybody can look at Google, you know, how many number one hits or two or three or whatever, how many people go to show that kind of, I want to know that. Uh, looking back in your career, you know, uh, as, a, as a professional musician, uh, what moment are special to you? Any any regrets, things you would have done differently? Or, and uh, um, easy to say than done, right? With some, looking, looking back, it's, it's very easy. I mean, it's very easy to connect the dot looking backward, but it's very, very difficult to do it, connect the dot going forward. So. Well, regrets, I just, I think, I think I just wish I, like, I probably, if I could go back, I just wouldn't be so hard on myself. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. I think, you know, I, I, I spent a lot of time, you know, before on my first, before my first record or when I first put it out, just being way too hard on myself and way too, um, I think the music industry makes you think that there's just like this ladder, right? You know, it's just like, you know, you're always trying to get to the next step this step isn't, you know, it's not good enough. You know, you got to get to the next step. And when you get to the next step, everything's going to be okay. And then when you get there, you, there's another step. And right. when you get to the next step, you know, it's like, you think about it and you're like, oh no, like, it's okay. I'll feel good about it if I, you know, as long as I write, like I write this record. And then you're like, when I make the record, it'll be okay. And when I gig the record and I get a gig and when I get my first festival gig, that's when I'll know that, you know, I'm valid and I'm good and I'm, that's when, and then it's, it just keeps going and there's, it's really tough, I think, um, to stop and, and say, you know, it's the making of it is the thing. That's the making is the thing. And well, the, the journey versus the destination, right? So. Yeah, exactly. It's the, it is, it's the journey. I mean, we're kind of, we're in a society that really like programs us to, to think of the world this way and to think of life this way like that it's just like first you do this and you get that and then you get to this career point and then you get to this career point and you're constantly and it's always like there's always a next step and then you're yeah. going to be happy and then you're going to be satisfied and then you're going to feel valid and um i think i would like to I'm, I'm trying really hard to make sure that i stay in the space of you know, feeling just really grateful for everything that is happening now. Mm. But I think in the past, I have definitely suffered from just go, feeling like I'm not good enough or that I'm being, too, um, and, and I've just been too hard on myself um, saying like that I need to be at this particular point or, you know, marking it by external things rather than internal things. Um, and I think that's that's probably my biggest regret. But I'm I'm really glad that I'm a place now that I, yeah. I I can embrace that. Yeah, you you I mean you're doing well. You know, maybe you're too hard yourself, and uh, you know, the, 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 you have a lot of gigs now. You you know, cross the ocean. You, you're in America playing and gigs and going places, and um, you you made it. I mean, it's, you know, looking back, you know, the time maybe you thought ah, I doubt myself. Who will listen to my stuff or why should I open myself about this or that, that, you know, um, you know, kind of the lyrics of the last of your last record, but um, you did it and uh, you should be very proud of it, you know? I think, um, you know, music is like, it's, it's the one career probably, maybe like it's one of the, in the arts in general, like where it's like you, unless like people don't mark you as being successful or we put this pressure on ourselves that you're not successful unless you reach like a certain intensely high level of success which yeah. is hilarious you know like it's just like you wouldn't think about that with anything else you wouldn't be like you know i don't know like if you're somebody who was like a i'm just trying to think like a like a mechanic or something and you'd be like but you're not the biggest mechanic in town and you don't own all the mechanic, you know, like, you know, business oh, sure. carriages, you know, like, well, like, you know, you can be a pretty good mechanic and yeah. good living and, and do that and be known by only the people in your area. Um, 
And I think, you know, we have to look at that, in, you know, in, in sort of like a, like look at how we look at success when it comes to musicians, because it, then it's just giving people, like sending them out to have sort of a, a sense of like, that they didn't make it. I hate the concept of making it, you know, like that kind of like, because, you know, you might make it to someone and not made it to someone else, you know, it, it's really about your own personal success and like what your, what your kind of idea is and reevaluating your idea of success, I think. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think I'd like to, to stay in that place where it's just like everything that ha happens is is really positive and great and, and not kind of think of it as in an ambitious way just kind of be like okay this is wonderful that this is happening and i'm really into it and um you know and, and living living the moment you know enjoying the moment it's uh, yeah. for me uh, also and for many people perhaps uh, we live in the past or we live in the future think that i regret that i did stupid things or think that i would like to do in the future whatever tomorrow next week but Live in the moment and be happy, and, and then enjoy the success or the failure, quote unquote, in the in the on the eyes of society, and uh, and uh, be happy. You know, be a happy human being, I suppose, whatever the profession that you chose. And uh, of course, you know, like in all professions, there are great medical doctor, great engineer, and terrible engineer, terrible lawyer. That everybody aims to be. You know, you two, uh, a Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, or the best mode and so forth, but those are kind of exceptions. How many bands don't make it? How many yeah. sport players don't make it? How many soccer players don't make it? You know, you don't make it so you know, quote unquote. You know, it's uh, you know, it's you can you can be happy and make a good living and be a a good musician. Little by little, you start building your fan base, and you know, before you used to do three gigs a year, now you're doing ten, twenty, and you play in Europe, you play in the United States, and you're coming out with the next record. You you you're doing well. You'll be happy with it. You know. Yeah. No, I mean I'm, I'm. This is this has been an amazing experience and amazing year. And you know, s signing with the label and everything. Yeah, absolutely. This has been just like pretty magic. You know, so and more than I, I sort of expected or, or dreamed could happen. So. Yeah. Um, I'm happy out. <laughs> so what, what is coming up from you and after uh, after you finish this tour here in the United States you, you're going back to Europe you're staying here or yeah no I'm going I'm going back uh, back home to Ireland yeah. and um, I'm doing a lot of a lot of a lot of traveling for work for my other job which is I work in in festivals and festival production yeah and then I'm so I'm heading to I'll be playing I'll be playing in Latitude as well so in the UK which yeah excited about um but I'll be doing a, like, I'm working like a literature festival when I get back to Ireland which will be fun and then be, are you planning on uh working on writing new material for the next album or I have it ready to go the album's made so wow it is is so it'll be coming out I don't know, sometime in the next year period, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, I've, I got to work with an amazing team of people on this. Um, you know, Rhea Trench, who is amazing multi-instrumentalist and producer, he's playing drums. Yeah. Daniel Fox from Gillibands is playing guitars and bass and um, yeah, uh, Jamie Freeland from uh, Mail uh, and uh, and Liam as well, uh, my producer who I worked with uh, on the other record. Um, they're all there, and we had a we had a really wonderful time, you know, making the record and kind of like locking ourselves into a studio for a little bit in the countryside, and it was really? yeah. So it was it was a really exciting process, and I'm I'm really excited to to. I guess put that out next. Good, good for you, man. Feel free to mention uh, the website where oh, or, yeah. the, or the record label where the, the listener can buy your music and get a hold of you and that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, well, you can buy you can buy the tapes uh, on uh, School Kids Records. Yeah, uh, there's four, um, and uh, it's it's uh, on limited edition tape, uh, so there's yeah. not that many 
I mean, we've actually sold a lot of them so far, so I don't know how many's left, but that's good. Yeah. Go ahead, go check them out. Yeah. Uh, uh, I spend most of my time on Instagram. So, yeah. like, as a, if you're looking to follow me, uh, it's uh, Nisha underscore Rue, um, at yeah. Nisha underscore Rue uh, for Instagram. And uh, yeah, um, that's it, really. Yeah. That's where you can find me on all the things. Yeah, and I will put the link on the description once I upload the video to uh, the radio. And um, it was very nice talking to you, and uh, you're a great musician. You're doing well. Keep on working hard, you know, release a new thing, and perhaps do a, a live album and, you know, yeah. keep on doing what you like and you will be doing very well in your life. So it was very nice talking to you. Say hello to Steven as well. That We changed so many emails. I don't know <laughs> in person, but I need to check it out. His record label as well for other yeah. music. But Maybe. it was it was very nice talking to you and good luck to you both. Oh, thank you. Okay, sweet. Thanks. Yeah.